To start off, this video will be based on a list Blizzard put out in Vanilla WoW that showed the stats of the 20 most dangerous NPCs I remember based on list. player kill count. This video will be oh, using siren. that list exclusively for its rankings, okay. so while there may be some mobs that the community collectively thought of as dangerous, like yep. Murlocs or Hogger, if they don't appear on the list Blizzard put out, they won't be in this video. Okay. And at number 10, we have the Harvest Watcher. No doubt. The Harvest Watcher was the 18th most dangerous mob. No and I'll explain doubt. a little bit later on why I'm kind of skipping around the list. Thank you, Screaming Bull. Instead of starting off with number 10 or the number 20th on the list. Okay. Because some of them can be kind of grouped together. Now, the Harvest Watcher was dangerous for a few reasons. Because he's higher level than anything else in the whole zone they do more damage and they aggro from a mile away like of, what do you mean oh oh and they're immune to bleeds too so you can't even can do anything to them yes it's very obvious why these mobs yeah they're rend immune you can't bleed them like they do a lot of damage they run fast as fuck too so yeah i'm not surprised because people you know they're like the little kids going around oh man i'm so good in elwyn forest and then they get into uh you know a little bit of westfall they fight some of the defiance in front i can do this oh man i'm i i guess i'm just naturally good at this game and you know they're level 11 and then the harvest golem that's level fucking 15 comes after them and they get the harvest golem down to like let's say uh 80 80 percent health and they're at 20 percent health and they're like uh oh i better run away and they start running away. Well, the harvest golem is going to run even faster than you are. He dazes them and they're fucking dead. That's how it works. Yeah, they learn. First off, it had two times the normal aggro radius of other mobs. You could be running on the road, and if you were just slightly yep. below the harvest watcher's level, yep. it would start chasing you down. There now, I don't is. know for sure, but I think Harvest Watcher had one of the largest aggro radiuses of all low-level mobs in the game. Yeah. Whether this was due to a bug or something well, they're called that watchers. just machine-type monsters could do, it's not really known. But also, it was a machine-type mob, so it was immune to a lot of things, including most CCs and poisons and bleeds. It's really Which great. made it particularly deadly because lots of low-level players had probably never run into a monster who was immune to some of their abilities before. Which goes into probably the third reason why it was one of the most dangerous mobs. Because it did and That's a lot because of it was in one of the zones that you go to directly after the starting zone in yeah. Westfall. Westfall is the first zone human alliance players would of go course. to. Of which course. means they were all pretty low level, rounds levels 10 to 15. And yeah, back yeah, in yeah. Vanilla WoW, Alliance was the most popular faction by far. And hu because it's better. That's why it's more, most popular. It's because it's better. Humans were the most popular race to play. It wasn't until the Burning Crusade introduced Blood Elves. Somebody, uh, let me pause here and read something, okay? Um, could you please advocate for the language-specific EU realms? Listen, I think that they should do language-specific EU realms. Not doing it seems like a bad idea. It'll create inner server enclaves and different micro communities within the server and it will make the server feel smaller and more frustrating and isolating for people that are not part of these servers uh unofficial de facto uh language it's going to be bad for everyone involved blizzard would be able to save themselves and a lot of the players a uh, ton of grief by just creating individual language locked servers okay so there you go that the population's kind of evened out but with the most popular race on the most popular faction going into yep. their first zone with hard monsters, it's no reason why the Harvest Watcher killed so many low-level players, especially with its double aggro radius and its immunity to certain abilities. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. And number nine, we have the Gadgetson Bruiser, who was the 17th most dangerous mob on Blizzard's list. Yeah, I would the say so. The Bruisers were the bodyguards for the high-level neutral city, Gadgetson, so they attacked both factions. If you attacked someone, if you attacked one of the bruisers, or if you were just attacked by someone else, the bruisers would gang up on you and kill you. You're fucking and dead. And since the mobs That's would root happens. you and swarm, it was really yep. hard to run away from them, so it was basically a guaranteed death. And part of the reason the Gadgetson's bruisers killed so many people yeah, was ridiculous. is because for some reason, on PvP servers, a lot of people like to PvP in Tanaris. For whatever reason, like, people will attack me, put look in game. I feel like, listen, I feel like... I feel like I'm a dad and I've got a bunch of kids and they keep showing me stupid ass fucking things that they draw pictures of 
and every single different time after the first time I have to pretend like it's special again uh, nice job you guys wrote layer good job I'm proud of you guys um, right right dicks yeah write dicks and I'll be proud of you okay and gadgets on specifically if you were standing around gadgets on and someone attacked you then the bruisers would also kill you and the person who attacked you. They only killed the so player it was really that was easy attacking, to grief I'm pretty people. sure. Also, if you were losing yeah. a PvP fight out in Tanaris, you could just run two gadgets on, yep. and the bruisers would kill both of you and you get a nice revenge kill. That's right. So the reason bruisers were so deadly in Vanilla WoW was basically because of world PvP. Number 8, Osirian the Unscarred. Now this guy is just I have no I don't know how the fuck this guy was so high up there because that implies that a lot of people did AQ20. And Osirian was fucking easy, by the way. Like anybody that didn't know this, like literally every single person, like right yeah, yeah, just a second here. Um I never yeah, if you had buffs to damage your attack like thorns, they'd turn on you too. Oh, I had no idea, dude. That's so fucking funny. Uh AQ20 was face roll, three day lockout, yeah, etc. But like Literally, all you had to do was bring him to the pillars. That was it. He was the easiest boss in the game. The final boss in AQ20. And what made him particularly deadly that bird was fuck. his ease of access for entering it, since AQ20 was a lot more accessible to yeah, the average player than true. AQ40. That's actually true. And kind of a hiccup with one of its earlier mechanics. Assyrian would really quickly enter Supreme Mode when the fight started. Yep. And in order to dispel Supreme Mode, you need to click on one of the crystals in the room. Yep. Except you had to find one of the crystals as soon as you pulled him. So if you couldn't find it quick enough, because they spawned in random locations... So here's, what you, here's what you did. You have the group of people. And then you find them beforehand. And you're like, okay, we're going to take him to here. We're going to have him. We're going to take him over to here. That's what we did. So it's like you, you would find them before you did the fight. <laughs> hey. Hey, I mean, listen. Uh, I was just, you know, spawn until you pull him. Uh, that's how it was on release. Oh, maybe on release it was different. By the time that I did it, uh, we were able to do them ahead of time. He would just gain supreme mode and start one-shotting people. Yep. Later on, they changed the fight, so the first crystal spawned immediately in a fixed location, so you didn't have to search the room for the first one anymore. But before this change, he probably got in a lot of cheap kills. Yeah. Plus, I've heard reports that I couldn't really confirm that clicking the crystals for this boss fight was sometimes kind of buggy and just didn't work. I think so that, that was just an excuse by people that were bad raiders that couldn't click to rationalize why they did it wrong. Why they failed at the one simple mechanic in the entire game, let's be honest. Uh, new present. Okay, all right, guys. You made dicks. I'm very proud of you. Great job, guys. Hey, hey. Uh, I I'm really, really proud of you guys, okay? Uh, let's, yeah, great, great job. Incredible. Truly. ...have led to his higher-than-average body count. And also, the crystals he spawned just kind of spawned in random locations around the room, so you had to run around and look for them. And I'd assume if you were really unlucky, you wouldn't be able to find them that quickly, or his supreme buff would come back and he would just start yep. killing everyone. Not a surprise. Number seven, the succubus pet. For what? some reason, the stats tracked the kills of player pets. What so the fuck? warlock, succubus, imp, and fell hunters all made spots in the list. Damn. Which is why I skipped the 19th and 20th spot and started the list off with the harvest. Wow, Watcher, I had no idea. Even though he was 18th. The fuck? Because the imp and fell hunter were 19th and 20th on their list. Holy and I thought shit. it just made more sense to group him up with the succubus, who was number 13th on the list. Yeah, she's hotter. So now the reason the succubus the is more popular yeah, of a sense. PvP pet, which is what I assume these stats were tracking, yep. is because the succubus had its charm ability which did not share a dr with fear so it allowed warlocks it a lot more ridiculous. control with their cc you could keep someone cc'd for a really long time with just a fear into a charm or you could charm someone and then hard cast a really hard hitting soul fire on them now while the succubus might have been the most popular of the warlock pets for pvp the imp and the fell hunter weren't that bad either number six the stormpike bowman and defender who came in at number 7th and 8th on yeah, I'm not list. surprised about this one, now, too. another big reason yeah, I kind pretty of accurate. skipped a lot of parts okay. when making this list is because yeah, about half of the NPCs on this list 
are NPCs from Alteric Valley. And by removing half of them, I actually kind of got a top 10 list. And this is why. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised about that either. I mean, the AV mobs, like back in the day, because we were all really shitty back then. I would have trouble killing those bowmen. I remember there were times I would 1v1 a bowman. I'd lose. I would fucking lose. And, and like, it, hey, I, it was embarrassing, but I would actually fucking lose. And uh, yeah, the AV is totally balanced. I know. Back then, well, listen. At least now I died to hunters and not bowmen. It's not a top 20 video. Now, the Bowman and Defender are the only two AV NPCs on this list that are kind of just like normal mobs. They're not super special ones, like yeah, I'll talk about in a little bit. But what made the Bowman and Defender so deadly, mainly the Bowman, is these were the NPCs who guarded the towers in Alteric Valley. Yeah, of The course. Defenders were just the ground troops, and the Bowmen were the real dangerous ones. You see, the way the Alliance Towers are designed makes them harder to capture than the Horde Towers. And part of the reason they were harder to capture was because they were more open-ended. And the Stormpike Bowmen were positioned in a way where they could shoot you from- How's it a Bowman if it's a girl? Like, look at this right here. I, isn't a Bow person or something like that? I mean, a, a, a Bowman? The hell is this? The road as you ran up to the tower and while you're running up the stairs of the tower, and while you were trying to capture the flag for the tower. They can't shoot you Whereas while capping? On the horde so side, stupid. Once you got inside the tower and started capturing the flag, if you positioned yourself correctly, the bowmen couldn't shoot you anymore. So the alliance ones yep. were just a lot more dangerous than the horde ones. It's because alliance and that's just is part the of the faction. alliance geographical advantage in Alteric Valley. Also, the choke point to get into the alliance home base is across a bridge. And the bridge has two towers right next to it, both filled with Stormpike Bowmen, who had an absolutely incredibly long range back in the day. Yeah, look they at could that, shoot dude. You just from the killed towers by the arrows. on the bridge about 100 yards away, just because I had such an incredibly long attack God, range. God, dude, I love this, And since this, this was man. a really good choke point for this. the Alliance to keep the Horde out yep. of the base, the Bowmen got a lot of cheap kills. God, in, dude, this is great. Whereas the Horde equivalent didn't really have a choke point like this at all. In there. Well, they, they, it's a funny thing about the Horde equivalent right here. If you look at this base, there is literally an opening over to the right where you can just go circle around. So the Horde are so fucking bad at building bases, they leave an opening in their main base. And you can just circle around and go up the tower. And I remember I would do this all the time. And even in Wrath of the Lich King, like this, this has been out for like 10 years or something like that, like Cataclysm, people still didn't know that you could do that. They still never figured it out. And I felt like fucking Xerxes every single time that I circled around and attacked the horde from behind and I got the, you know, the upper advantage on them. And uh, nothing ever fucking mattered. Like, this happened for a long time. And I think they ended up fixing it because it was so broken. Home base, anyway. Their choke point was at a graveyard that didn't have any bowmen anywhere near it. Now, right. the Stormpike bowmen having such a high spot at number seven on the list kind of makes sense because they could just snipe people down from the bridge. I was kind of surprised that the defenders, the melee ground unit, made number 8th on the list. But that probably could be because of the alliance advantages in that battleground. Number 5. What? The Defias Pillagers. The what, do, what do you mean alliance advantages? What's he talking about? What 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 do you mean like an alliance advantage? You mean like because the Alliance are better players? Oh yeah, that is true. No, you got, I forgot about that. Yeah, Alliance are good. Yeah, they, they are better players. Uh, I forgot. I take a piss. I'll be right back. Okay, uh, let's see. Are we all good? Yeah, we're good. And say Defias anything? Pillagers were fifth on I don't want to take the risk. List. And the Defias Trappers were number nine. No risks. Which I'll just group up here since they're both Defias mobs. Although, the Defias Pillagers were way more deadly than the Trappers. The Trappers were also in Westfall and just kind of lower level mobs that were really packed close together. And what made them unique was not only were they packed close together and they could just completely destroy you if you pulled more than once, but they also rooted you, which made them a lot harder to run away from. And it Do you know why they rooted you? Because of the Trappers. They trapped you. 
the pillagers honestly like the pillagers do more damage with their attacks than like level 35 or 40 mobs do with their same attacks like even even elite mobs like the elite mobs in scarlet monastery do less damage with their fireballs than the pillagers do with theirs it's fucking ridiculous in addition to this the defias trappers also dropped a rare item called a large rope net this item, which Wait, worked in PvP, would root a target for 10 seconds what? and could be used on any character that had it. What? And the Defy's Trappers were the easiest mob to farm them from, but the Pillagers were the oh, real really? threats. And since these were some of I the never first that. caster mobs that low-level players ran into, yeah, I've never seen that drop. they didn't really have any experience with dealing with the fact that they couldn't just run away from them because they could yep. just fireball them from 40 yards damage. away. 84. Or also the fact that if they accidentally pulled another Holy one, shit, dude. they could just attack him from range. And the Defiance Pillagers were clumped really insane. close together as well. It was really hard to Do just you guys pull know one on their own is? unless you were just kind of picking them off at the edges of the town where they spawned. Yep. And since the Pillagers both hit really hard and were always paired up with other Pillagers close by and <laughs> like Defiance Looters your health, man. who had this really great distinction of being Jesus a low-level mob that really loved to disarm you. Which just made them even more deadly to Five any health. class that relied on their here. weapons. Yeah, yeah, and I to add so. to the fact that they're also humanoid mobs, which means they ran when they were low on health. So oh, they, they would just pull one. more looters That's and a bonus pillagers mob. that were packed in close nearby. And like I mentioned with the harvester earlier on in the list, these were all in Westfall, one of the most populated low-level zones because, well, it was the human zone, and humans were the most popular race in Vanilla WoW. Rogue stealth back then, it wasn't that good. Let's just say that. It wasn't that good. All of these factors just kind of combined together to make an amalgamation of one of the most deadly low-level mobs in the game that actually beats out most raid bosses when it comes to player kills. Not a Number surprise. Number four, the War Masters in Alteric Valley. The War Masters are all going to be clumped up together because they collectively take up number 16th, 12th, 11th, 10th, 6th, and 4th on... Why is the Stone Hearth one so powerful? Like, what makes him, I guess, basically because he's always spawned? Uh, I mean, maybe that's it. I'm not even amazed, though. Uh, I'm, I'm not even surprised. Look we'll, we'll at that, dude. I mean, all of those fucking War Masters is just whirlwinding people down like crazy. This is how popular AV used to be. Like, this is what people would do. Like, people said that PvP... Like, PvP nowadays in WoW is, like, just this afterthought. But, like, back in the day, PvP was, like... It was a big component of the game. Uh, obviously, the majority of the game was PvE. It always has been PvE. But back then, like, PvP was such a big fucking deal because you were able to PvP for actual PvE gear. And that's something that we didn't have any now. Well, we don't really have now as much, right? And, like, you, we do, but, it, the, like, the gear is just, like, replaceable and you can get it from, like, eight different other places, too. But with, uh, with Alterac Valley, everybody would get AV up to Exalted to get either the Unstoppable Force or to get the Don Julio's band, or the immovable object, or I think there was like an offhand uh, caster item too. Like these items were fucking ridiculous. And the Tabard. Yes, of course the Tabard. Blizzard's 20 list. And one of the big reasons I decided to reorder the list to kind of clump them together. And instead, yeah. I decided if I was going to clump up these NPCs together, I was just going to take whichever one was highest on the list and use that to place them on my list. So since one okay. of the War Masters made number four on the list, they're making it on a high spot on my list as well. Now the War Masters are just the NPCs who accompany the general in Alteric Valley and hit really hard as well. Oh, I wonder how many either exist how many or disappear has. depending on how many towers you control. That's a good and point. And because they fought alongside the generals, they got tons of kills in. Yeah. Which I'll get into a little bit yeah. more when I cover the number one spot on this list. Is it, it's number not gonna, three, it's gonna be direct. Anixia. Anixia was also number three on Blizzard's list. Wow. Now, Anixia is one of the first raid bosses available to players in Vanilla WoW. If there's any more evidence that people in Vanilla WoW were fucking terrible, how much more do you need that Anixia was the third most deadly mob in the entire game? All right, I mean, let's be honest. That's fucking ridiculous. You run back to the fight, those people died like crazy on Anixia? That's true, too. We talked about that the other day. Yeah, the people in Vanilla were fucking garbage. 
And also, one but of the first that classic? is just like the only boss yeah, that Yeah, because the heroes raid. won't heal me. In fact, I'm pretty sure Onyxia is the first single boss raid in the game. And because Onyxia was the first single boss raid, yep. the first dragon boss, it was done by pretty much every player who ever raided in vanilla WoW. That's like, you know, I think about that, like, nowadays, like, everybody knows you fight a dragon from the side, right? Not in front for the breath, not behind for the tail whip. But back then, like, that was, like, new information. Like, people didn't know that. So they would just be like, I'm gonna fight this dumbass bitch right head to head. And then they get breath done, they die. Like, oh, shit, man. Okay, well, I'll go from behind then. That way she won't see me. You go from behind, boom, knocked into the whelps. It's a wipe. It's actually crazy now that I think about like all the things that we just kind of t uh, no that was you no I'm serious I got whenever I said this I was not lying like I literally would only attack bosses from the front like I I face I face my enemies head on I don't give a fuck about parry I I didn't know I didn't know that you could parry from from in front not behind like I literally had no idea like I would I would just fight that boss right from the front dude yeah alpha as fuck <laughs> I was a fucking idiot. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy to think about, like, all the things that we kind of just take for granted now, and we just kind of assume, oh, yeah, of course, this is the case. Back then, like, we didn't know that shit at all. Because of this, and the fact that Onyxia was kind of a hard boss fight, yeah. it raked up probably the most amount of kills out of any other raid bosses in vanilla. Maybe, I mean, until we get to number two spot on this list. Number two, Valistraz the Corrupt, who was also number two on Blizzard's list. Valistraz is the second boss in the Blackwing Lair, and is the reason Blizzard made early bosses and raids a little bit easier than all the other bosses in the raid, because- I don't like that. I don't like that. I like it whenever you get into the raid and it's like the third boss, that's the cock block. That's the real cock block. And if you can't get through them, then you can't get to the other bosses. But if you can make it past that boss, you knew that you had a license to just get gear. And are you saying that we evolved? I am saying that we evolved. The players are a lot better than they used to be. A fucking course yet. But you get boosted? I, I don't think... Listen, if you are so bad that you need to be boosted in Classic WoW, then you should probably just quit the game and go play Tic-Tac-Toe. Like, I mean, it, the game is so fucking easy. There's no way that you can do it wrong unless you're trying. Valistraz was also more commonly known as Valistraz the Guildbreaker. Being the second boss yep. in the raid, it was an incredibly hard boss to take down. In fact, one of the hardest bosses in the game, like, ever. And because it was the second boss in the raid, it was somewhat easy to get to, which means a lot of people got to see the fight, and tons and tons of people got to die to it. Especially since one of the mechanics of the fight basically just made sure you were going to die no matter what. You guys remember that whenever, uh, you know, they wiped my entire raid, whenever we were doing Project 60, and some dipshit dumbass, there's literally, like, Burning Adrenaline is literally the only mechanic in the entire fight, whenever you do this on Project 60, that's meaningful. And somebody stood in the raid, and they killed everyone. It was on stream. I think it's on YouTube, even. Alistraz raked up the highest body count of all of the bosses from Not a when surprise. this list was made anyway. I think this list yeah. that I'm getting all this information from came like somewhere towards the middle of Vanilla WoW or something. It towards it, yeah. So it's like not really the most so, accurate thing in the world. So if you've ever wondered why modern raids have the very sane mechanic of the early bosses being easier than the final bosses, it's because of Valistraz. Before then, all of the bosses in the raid were kind of difficult. Kind yeah. of, like, equally difficult. And it was ah. kind of unreasonable for one of the harder bosses to be at the beginning of the raid. Maybe. Because then you couldn't really farm the raid for gear in order to down it. And that's why they moved all of the harder bosses towards the end. I like that, though. I, I, I like that. I think that's cool. Like, if you... If you have to, like, beat this boss, like in Gorefiend, I think Gorefiend's a good example. If you beat Gorefiend in Hellfire Citadel, you are going to be able to kill the next three or four bosses very, very easily. So it wasn't just beating Gorefiend whenever you actually beat him. It was beating the other bosses and knowing that it's like, okay, we fucking made it. We can do it. Now we can kill the rest of the bosses. Like, having all the bosses scale up in difficulty, I think it's good, right? Of course. But I do think they should make a little bit more difficult uh, beginning bosses. Because, like, now, like, the first and the second bosses in most raids, I mean, they're, like, they're target dummies, almost. It's embarrassing. 
the uh, the World of Warcraft comic. I don't want to look at the comic. And number one, Drek'thar, the Horde General in Alteric Valley. Now, with half of the NPCs on this list being NPCs yep. from Alteric Valley, it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise as one of the generals. Not a surprise was the at all. One spot. Of course, the Alliance General Vandar also did make the list. He was number fifteenth on Blizzard's list. I just didn't include him because I thought I would just mention him here with Drek'thar, who was number one. Now, the reason Drek'thar was so much more deadly than the Alliance General is because they had to overbuff him because the 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 Horde, the Alliance players were just simply superior. So what they had to do is they had to make Drek more powerful than Vandar in order to actually just balance it out. And even then, the Alliance still had a 90% win ratio in Alterac Valley. I mean, it, it's just at a certain point, like Blizzard, I mean, they just they didn't know what to do. Was because Alteric Valley kind of favored the Alliance a little bit more than it did the Horde. What? And because the Alliance kind of outnumbered the Horde a little bit when it came to population size until the Burning Crusade kind of evened it out with the Blood Elves being added. And no. because both no. the Battleground favored the Alliance a little bit more than it no. did the Horde, and because the Alliance had a larger population, they got to make it to the enemy general more That's often. That's a bunch of shit. And therefore, die to him a oh, lot more. Oh, that, that actually does make sense. And since the NPC in Alter that, that Valley was the enemy sense. general, Holy shit. Yeah, of course. since that's what you needed to kill a in order to course. win the Battleground, and in Vanilla WoW, there wasn't a reinforcements mechanic, so you could just keep wiping and wiping to the general as much as you wanted. Yeah, it was great. It's no surprise that it raked up the most amount of kills out of all the other NPCs. And it also makes sense why six of the other spots in this list were just the War Masters who accompanied their generals, because there was so, so much I'll killing going on in those general basically. rooms. All right, and that's the end of the list. Now, I talked about Alteric Valley a lot in this video. Yeah, it's the best BG ever made. Some controversial things as if they were fact uh, but I've already made a video on vanilla Alteric Valley which goes into a lot more detail about exactly why the Alliance had a slight advantage over the Horde so if you're we're not watching that if you're really curious uh, I'd recommend you watch the video and I'll yeah, have we're a not gonna, we're not gonna, this no, one. I don't want to watch that now about this remake yeah, this I, video I don't will be the that. first in a series where I'll go back and remake no. choice videos and even update them with new info. I plan on doing the top 10 hardest raid bosses as well, but if you have suggestions for some of my old videos you'd like to see me do an update to, just let me know. The reason I chose to do this video first was because the original one was just so bad, and the order I chose was in this was just kind of random, which it made seemed fine to no me. sense for the kind of data I had to work off of. So I've always wanted to remake yeah, it, was it. fine. If you want to see the original video I made on this topic, I'll link it at the end of this so you can see for yourself why this video needed to be remade. Because the original one is just so garbage. Okay, okay, all right, you know what? Listen, listen, basically hoard or better. No, no. All right, listen. Here's one thing you need to understand: is that um, the alliance, uh, alliance and Alterac Valley have no like they have no advantage at all. They never did. The only problem was that the only advantage that the alliance had was being the faction that was comprised of the superior players. Right? Uh, that that's honestly the truth. Uh, and everybody want, might want to be upset about that. That was the advantage that the alliance had, and they had that advantage. Wait, they had.